Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during the service, except when we pray the Lord's Prayer and exchange peace with one another. We are many parts. We are all one body. And the gifts we have, we are given to share. St. Paul wrote, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. When each person uses their individual gifts for the common good, the community grows and flourishes. How do we each use our own gifts and talents to share the life of Jesus with others? Please stand and join in our gathering song. Gather the people, enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table we dine as kin, beloved family of God. We share the body of Christ the Lord. Here we become what we need. Gather the people, enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. Banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table we tell great tales, the wondrous stories of grace. We hold the memory of Christ the Lord, so we become what we need. Gather the people, enter the feast, all are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. Around this table God's bounty falls on all who hunger and thirst. We drink the fullness of Christ the Lord, so we become what we need. Gather the people, enter the feast. All are invited, the greatest and least. The banquet is ready, now to be shared. Join in the heavenly feast that God has prepared. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are part of Christ's body. For the times we have not fully lived up to this calling, we ask our loving God for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you return to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your words are spirit and they are life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the fulfillment of the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, these two people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, 
We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our attentions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra, the priest, brought out the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were introducing the people said to all the people, today is holy to the Lord your God, do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people who were weeping as they heard those words of the law, he said further, go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks. And a lot portions of these who had nothing prepared for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's law is perfect, refreshing the soul. Reviving the weary spirit. God's rule can be trusted, bringing us wisdom, bringing God's wisdom to birth. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. God's precepts keep us, their purpose is right. They gladden the hearts of people. God's command is so clear, it brings us new vision. Bringing God's light to our eyes. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord. Richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord. Life everlasting. Living by God's truth is holy and sure. God's presence is everlasting. God's truth is eternal, bringing us justice, bringing God's justice to earth. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord. Richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as the body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in your spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink at one spirit, of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
According to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings that you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor and has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. In 1975, the Jesuits changed their mission. They adjusted it and transformed it in order to uh, meet better the challenges of this time, which is what the Jesuits are always doing. That's one of the things we're supposed to do is adjust and uh, to meet the needs of the time. So they changed their mission to a faith that does justice, not just a faith, not just a defense and propagation of the faith, but a faith, that, a faith that does justice without exception. It must be that. Then what happened was kind of one of the things that happened, many wonderful things happened, but one of the things that was sort of comical that happened is that certain people were really uh, you know, drawn towards that immediately. And, uh, and then people who came along a little bit later, they began to notice there was a, social justice kind of guy. There was a kind of Jesuit who seemed to be a kind of typical kind of person. That they all seemed to be here in the Oregon province anyway. They all seemed to wear Birkenstocks <laughs> and have big thick wool socks and Birkenstocks. And you never saw them in clerics unless there was a protest. If there was a camera and a protest, they put, boy, they looked like a priest. They got their clerics on and they marched and they looked like a priest in front of the cameras. And uh, they seemed to choose the ugliest vestments possible to kind of be in solidarity with the poor. So they didn't really pay that much attention to what people had to look at that they weren't looking at themselves, but they had to prove they were poor. So they usually had the most ugly vestments possible to prove it. And so what happened, of course, is then other people said, 
Well, I'm not, I guess I'm not a social justice kind of guy. Because I'm not wearing Birkenstocks in this life, let me tell you. And, uh, you know, I'm in the leather shoe crowd. And uh, I, people are going to have to look at me. I don't want to have to look at ugly vestments. So I'm going to, so there became this thing of social justice got, social justice got too uh, identified with the outward. That you were either a certain kind of social justice guy or you weren't. And of course, that has very little to do with what real social justice is really all about. And so in our gospel, we have a, 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 we have a scripture where Jesus speaks to us in, in classic social justice terms about how it's not just about us, but we're also worried about our neighbor. Jesus, Jesus is always, uh, he's always making it clear what the highest value of God is. Because what Jesus seems to be doing, we would maybe expect Jesus to give us the blueprint. We know Jesus is into social justice, so, so maybe we'd expect him to give us the blueprint of the ideal society in which everything was fair and everybody was treated fairly. And yet, that doesn't seem to be what Jesus was concerned about, because he doesn't do that. Doesn't, Jesus doesn't give us the blueprint for a new society. Instead, what Jesus does is, or what he seems to be most interested in all, if we look at this scripture and we look at the rest of his teaching and his life, was about getting into very clear words for us and very powerful words backed up by the example of his life. What were the values? What were the highest values that any social situation had to live up to. Jesus seemed to be most interested in articulating very clearly what are the values, how do they stack up, what are the highest values, what are the next highest, what are the next highest, and that any social situation must answer to those values. We must hold those values in any situation. We must try to conform any social situation to them they are what we are most committed to, no matter what social situation we're in. And so that highest value was very clear. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your mind, and with all your soul, and your neighbor with, as yourself, so that you see them in the eyes of God, and so you see them as having absolute value, and you see them with the eyes of God's love, and you see in them absolute value. And those are the highest values. Those are at the top. There's nothing higher. And so it doesn't matter whether you're in a, so whether you're raised in a capitalist country or a Marxist country, company, or country, those are still the highest values that you have to work for. And you work for the transformation of society, of any society. It doesn't matter if you were born in a communist country or in, democratic country. There are millions upon millions of Catholics and Christians in China under a quasi-communist country. They still have the highest values that they must live up to, and they must try to transform their society according to those highest values. It doesn't matter if you're in a socialist country or a democratic country. Still, those are the highest values. So it's not about the outward. It's not just about looks, not just about looking at the outward. It's about the values and how we stack them up and how we live for the highest values no matter what social situation we're in. That seems to be Jesus' approach. And so social justice can be, we all, you know, that happened with the Jesuits right on, and, and that's not to hard to figure out or to predict that when you do something new, you're gonna make all mistakes, all kinds of mistakes at the first time. I've said that my uh, motto and one of my mottos in life is you can never get it right the first time. You can only get it better the second time. And so the Jesuits source learned from this and we, we get the fact that it's not, social justice is not about what kind of, whether you wear Birkenstocks or not. It's not just about the outside, the outward. It is about the things that have to happen inside of your heart and mind 
in order to fight for those values, no matter what situation you're in. So we're all called to be social justice people. There's no such thing as a social justice type. We're all called to be into social justice. There's just no getting around it. And so we know how that works. You see somebody and they touch your heart, somebody's need touches your heart, somebody's discriminated against, somebody's treated in a way that is not consistent with the absolute value of these teachings of Jesus and our hearts are moved. And when we want to help somebody, because we'll be moved to help them, when we want to help somebody that we care about, that we love, we don't first give them something. We first of all receive something from them. So when we see somebody who's hurting and we want to help, we have to receive something from them first. And what we receive are their questions. Their questions have to become our questions. And so if you, if somebody, if you see a black person who's being uh, mistreated, then questions of what it is to be black has to become yours. You have to ask their questions because what we know is that black people ask questions that white people don't ask. And we wanna know what their questions are. They have to become ours. So then we start to work for them. If you see a two keys person that is being mistreated, then we have to, their questions have to become our questions because two keys people can ask questions that we don't, that we, who are white and in, in the normal power structure, the dominant power, we don't ask. And we're not gonna ask unless we receive their questions. And the same is true for Hispanics and the Vietnamese and any minority. And the same is true about men and women because men, you might've figured out that women ask questions that men don't ask. Now that should have gotten an amen for the women, I would think. <laughs> And so justice then becomes a matter of being unbiased. It's not about just something outward. It's are we open to ask the questions of the people that we care for and let them become our questions. So you know what happens when you let their question become our question? We get energized and we start to do the work of caring for them. You know, that woman comes and says, you know, I don't have the, I've got three kids and they need dental, They're, they've got toothaches and, they, and I, don't have, I don't have the money to go to a dentist and I don't have health. And all of a sudden, her, your question becomes, how do we get those kids to a dentist? And you start to think and you start to use your imagination, you start to use your intelligence, and you start to come up with, well, what about this? I wonder if I did that, oh, well, what if I talked to that person? And you start to work on it. It becomes your question. And now you're in social justice. You're in the social justice area. It's not just about you. It's about what we're gonna do for our neighbor. Are they going to be treated with the absolute value of God? And so what we can then get into is the horizontal and the vertical. And that's what gets complicated about social justice because if we're on the horizontal level, we can get so focused on that that we, if we look at it exclusively, if we just stay in the work and the struggle and the fight of that, and we do it exclusively, what happens is we kind of lose our taste for God. We kind of lose our taste for talking to God because we're so busy. We are so busy with the incredible work of social justice that we lose our taste for just coming. This is what we start to say. We say, you know, I'm working too, I'm work, I have way too much, I'm working too much to pray. I don't have time to pray. Or the great Jesuit one, I'm working so hard for God that my work is my prayer. Yeah, right. And so what we do is we lose our taste for coming into the presence of God as a person and being in the presence of God and speaking to God as we would speak to a best friend and listening to God as we would listen to a best friend. Because we've gotten over we, to the exclusion of prayer, we've gotten involved in the horizontal. And then there are the people who are really involved in the vertical. They get 
exclusively involved in the vertical because they want a straight line to God. They want a vertical line that goes straight to God and connects right to God. And they don't want to be bothered with the distractions and the messiness of the temporal patterns of matter and the order, the social order and all of the difficulties and complexities of it. They just want a straight connection to God. And then they've ignored the social justice part of it. And so our challenge is how do we do both at the same time? How do we do both at the same time? Because we should be able to. We should be able to withdraw from the work of social justice, from the work of holding the questions of the people we care about and wondering how we can help them answer those questions. We should be able to withdraw to that, from that to prayer, and then receive knowing that if we do that, we will receive the strength, the inspiration, the peace of mind, charged up with the love of God to go back into that work again. But we should be able to do both. And if we are people of prayer, we should be, we should know that if we only focus on the prayer and being straight, straight connection to God without any horizontal, we should know that we're going to become people that are only happy, will be people that are unreal because we're only in touch with half of reality. And you've probably known people who are incredibly spiritual, but they're only half real. They're not quite fully real because they're not in touch. They won't stay in touch with the real world. It's all about this. It's none of this. And so when it comes to justice, it helps us find a balance. We have to find a balance between both of those things. And I'm going to suggest this morning that one of the ways that we all can do that is the prayer of social justice, which is to say to God, is to come into the presence of God and to speak to God eye to eye, face to face, and ask God to create a change in our hearts for the sake of something outside our hearts. Is that ask God to give us a conversion of heart inside for something outside, so that we'll have both of those going at the same time. And that prayer of social justice is pretty easy for us to amazingly easy for us to uh, avoid uh, because I'm pretty sure God is going to, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely sure God's going to answer that prayer. And then we're going to have to listen to God and we're going to say, all right, then how do I begin to care for what's going here on here as well as here? And we have to try to get both of parts of our life. We won't live with a split soul. We bring both of the parts of our soul together. So we're both, we're all called social justice. There's no such thing as a social justice type. We're all called to it. We're also called to keep a balance. And so let's come to the, let's come to the table today and let's come with that prayer in our heart, the social justice prayer in our heart that asks God, give me a conversion and a change of the heart within me for the sake of something outside me. Let us stand now and bring our prayers to the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Trusting that the scriptures are fulfilled in Jesus Christ, 
we raise our prayers and our petitions to God for more full life and love. Our response is, O oh God, hear our prayer. O oh God, oh, hear our prayer. prayer. As the church prepares for the synod, may she strive to uplift the voices of all peoples, especially those who might be otherwise ignored or overlooked. We pray. Oh God, oh God hear, our hear our prayer. In our turbulent times, may all nations find ways to live in peace with one another and with respect for their people in need. We pray. Oh God, oh God hear, our hear our prayer. May divisions within our country, political, familial, racial, be brought to peaceful, respectful resolutions. We pray. Oh God, God, hear our prayer. For the people of Tonga who are without shelter, food, and other services, that they may receive help to find shelter, safety, and rest. With, we pray. Oh God, oh God, God, hear our prayer. May the voices of those concerned for our sacred and endangered earth be heard and followed. We pray. Oh God, oh God, hear our prayer. prayer. May those in our parish who are sick or hurting in any way find health and solace through the love of Christ and our compassionate concern. We oh pray. God, oh God, hear our prayer. May we all soon have relief from the ravages of the pandemic and be spared future waves of illness. We pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we are members of one body. When one of us suffers, all of us suffer. Hear these prayers we bring before you so that we might all grow in fellowship and community, rejoicing in our common mission. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son. Drawn to you, Lord, we are drawn to you, to the beauty of your presence in this place. Here for you, God, we are here for you, as the gifts we bring become a feast of grace. We are drawn to you. Drawn by the love that you have poured us, we bring these gifts, works of our hands. You gather all we offer to yourself receive our prayer drawn to you Lord we are drawn to you to the beauty of your presence in this place here for you God, we are here for you, as the gifts we bring become a feast of grace, we are drawn to you. Drawn by the faith that you accept our gifts and sanctify what we have shared to make us holy by this bread and wine receive our prayer drawn to you lord we are drawn 
from you to the beauty of your presence in this place. Here for you, God, we are here for you. As the gifts we bring become a feast of grace, we are drawn to you. We are drawn to you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and glory of his name. Amen. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that we may profit, that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and we move and we have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care for us, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of your spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all of the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation to us, the hand that you reach out to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought to us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us already, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. And so, Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us all with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. And may he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, with all of the bishops and your entire people everywhere that your son has gained for you. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together again with the glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Charles, with St. Rutilio Grande, and with all of the saints, but also with all of our brothers and our sisters and those of every race and every language who have died in your friendship, bring us to share along with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. We invite those who are on Zoom to unmute at this time and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, let us dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace to us in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power, 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 I give you, look not upon our sins, look instead upon the faith of your church and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace Amen. of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign. Peace with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace everyone. Peace, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
sins of the world. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, on the love that we share our hope in despair, on the cross that we bear, God of all we look to you, we would be your servants true, let us be your love to all the world, we are many parts. And the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed. On the love that we share, on our hope in despair, on the cross that we bear. So my pain is pain for you, in your joy is my joy too, all is brought together in the Lord. We are all one part, we are all one body, and the gifts we have. We are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed. On the love that we share, on our hope in despair, on the cross that we bear.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us this new life, that we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Be sure to pick up a bulletin on your way out. If you have a donation, please put it in the box in the back. We appreciate your financial support. There are new issues of the Catholic Sentinel and El Sentinella. Pick one up on, from one of the entryways. Thank you, Mary Lee. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of additional announcements. We are still in um, suspension mode for hospitality. So uh, sorry, no coffee or donut or juice today. One Sunday soon, perhaps. Uh, yes, be sure to pick up a bulletin. Inside the bulletin is a flyer that describes the, our uh, spring uh, series, Reading the Bible Rebelliously, uh, with Dave Gregory, theology teacher at, at De La Salle. And as you've heard me describe, we're, we're simply breaking open some lovely passages from the Old Testament that speak to liberation, justice, redemption, both back in those times, but also how they speak to us in our times today. Our first session is this Tuesday, 7 p.m. via Zoom only. And so the details for how to connect on Zoom are right there uh, in the bulletin. Um, I want to, I forgot to mention this last night, but I want to mention to you that when you come to Mass next Sunday, um, there will be a, a, a little new addition up here in the altar area. We have arranged to uh, install very simple uh, handrail on either side of the altar step here, on this side and, and over there, uh, to help those coming up or going down who might wish to have some assistance. Just to give you a sense, if, if you look over by the Paschal candle over here, that very simple handrail uh, that uh, helps with those two steps uh, will be pretty much look just like that. So that, that's due to be installed on Tuesday. So take a good look next week. You could even try it out. <laughs> You heard one of our prayers of the faithful speak to the synod. Uh, Pope Francis has declared a synod for 2023 uh, focused on listening. And uh, it's early in the, in the process simply because Pope Francis has said that he literally wants to hear from all the faithful. And uh, so we, over the next couple of months, are going to engage in a process that is designed to give you an experience of having being heard in terms of what, what would you like to say to the Pope, to the church, about your journey of faith and about how the church has been a help or a hindrance to you uh, in that respect. But most importantly, what Pope Francis is doing with this is attempting to shift the way we do church. And that important shift is to give all of us, the faithful, an opportunity to be heard uh, in the context of, of how we journey through together as community. So we're gonna be true to that, we're gonna honor that and um, details to come, uh, but in the next couple months, uh, we will make our voices heard uh, to Pope Francis. When we think of the synodal, synodal process that we're being invited to go through, we might remember that no one person can know the full truth by themselves. 
And the reason is because learning the truth is basically a process of asking and answering questions and nobody can ask all the questions. The only way to ask all the questions is we need everybody else. We need to hear everybody else's questions because we'll never ask them by ourselves. We need to hear everybody else. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, the masses enter. Thanks be to God. Here in this time, here in this place, here we are standing face to face. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is He. Here for the broken, here for the strong, here in this temple we belong. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is He. And we cry, Holy, Holy, Holy are You. We cry, Holy, Holy, Holy and True. Amen, we do believe our God is He. Our God is He. Here in the Word, God is revealed. Here where the wounded can be healed. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here we become what we receive. Here in this Eucharistic feast, we are His body, living as one. Our God is He. Cry, holy, holy, holy are you. We cry, holy, holy, holy and true. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Our God is here. And we cry, holy, holy. Holy are you, we cry holy, holy, holy and true. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Amen, we do believe our God is here. Our God is here. Oh, God, he's here. Isn't that a good one? Yeah.